Hello YouTube. Right, today's video. It's not going to be an in-depth. I've already done the work and it's that. And what you're looking at is not an oil cooler. That is a turbo cooler. And what that is doing is it's plumbed into the water system, which I will show you in a minute. Because, as you know from all my videos, I'm always suffering with heat issues. Now, I've come to realise after all these years, right, the problem area, I think... Well, I think, I'm pretty sure it's that intercooler, right? People have been saying it for years. I know some of you may have full light intercoolers causing me temperature problems. I've pretty much done everything to this car that I can do to try and keep it cool. Now, the temperatures are not mega, although they were higher than I wanted a fault. When we're in 30 degree temps, it's too hot, right? But I want to keep running aircon. Um, so the goal is, can I keep this car cool enough and use aircon? That's probably blocking too much flow. I've got the pipe work for the oil cooler there because the oil cooler is sunk down behind now into like where the crash bar is. Um, you know, I've got an AirTech rad. So that's done. I've got the Puma Speed pulley on there. And the idea I had with that was because I'm running at such high RPM, it would slow the water pump down. So when you're at like 6,000 plus, it'll just bring you down a bit in case it's cavitating. In hindsight, I think that pulley's a lot of junk. It's going to come off. It's going to go in the bin. So apologies to anyone who watched that video and ended up buying one. It doesn't. It doesn't work. It's a lot of crap. Um, back to this cooler. Now, let me show you our whip plums, and then I'll show you the bits that I bought to actually make it work. Right. So you've got your water. We'll normally return from the turbo. That's the usual S280 connection there, and that pipe. But then comes straight back into your bottle there. So it comes from the turbo, hot as hell, straight back into the bottle, right? But what it's doing now is coming out of the turbo, it's coming down, it's going into this cooler, which is an oil cooler, but it's not an oil cooler today. And then it comes back out and goes into the bottle. So what I've managed to do is the original pipe, which is this one here, that would normally connect onto the S280 fit in, and the standard hard line. I've just reused that and that's in the top. And I've got my new hose then that's coming from there. So the water comes in through the bottom, through the top, and back in. Now you could do this for pretty cheap, right? This have cost me about 170, 180, I think, off memory because I bought the best or I think I bought around about the best I can get, right? Because I didn't want to cheap out and I didn't want to end up with water leaks and all of that, blah, blah, blah. So it's a Mokal 13 row oil cooler. The fittings, these are 10 mil push on fittings. Now these don't even need Jubilee clips. They're apparently the water pipes will push on and hold, but you can put Jubilee clips for um, added benefit shall we say and these are swivel fit ends they don't even they stay loose don't leak but they were expensive just them two alone were 50 quid just for the two elbows but like i said i wanted to pay more money i didn't want to have no leaks we don't want to be losing an engine for a water leak so i paid the money the hose is air equip now i got this from i can't i think the oil cooler I think I might have found a good deal for that on eBay, but anyway, you can get it from Merlin Motorsport. So I got the fittings, the elbows from Merlin, and I got the air equipped hose from Merlin, as well as the Jubilee clips. So if you went to Merlin and bought everything, I think you'd be looking at about 190 ish, but I managed to get the, the cooler for, I think it was 80, 90 quid. Like I said, I didn't buy none of the cheap stuff. If you was to buy a cheap eBay one, and the pipe work and stuff, right? And the fittings. I reckon you could do this for between 40 and 60 quid, depending on what size you go. Right, to mount it, as you can see, I just knocked up a little alloy corner bracket there. That was easy. I put a rivet. There's a standard hole already in the metal work there. So I drilled that a bit bigger, rivet at that. Down the bottom here, put the horn back on. I should have left that off you to see actually, but the horn would be in the way. But that bolts back on this side quite easily. But what I've done is I've got a threaded bar with 30 mil um, nuts on it. You see that? And that then goes into where the, the cross um, member meets up 
there's a hole there anyway I think it's for the cable and I've just bolted through that so that is pretty solid yeah there's a tiny bit of movement but to be honest unless something hits that that's not moving anywhere which would mean well yeah I've crashed it so if I crash it that's gonna move and I'll be the least of my worries anyway so that is that but obviously it's got to get airflow now i'm very much interested in airflow with coolers and stuff like that right so the important thing is we're going to get into it air into it we're going to get air out of it so i don't know how this is going to work out yet because you've got to imagine the bumper is going to be on here we've got this void here there is airflow that can go down there that's quite open so hopefully the air will exit out this in time what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a camera under there i'll put some string tufts and we'll see how air is exiting if i have to like put some slots into this i don't really want to go cutting this open for two reasons right firstly if i put holes in that in the thinking that it needs to evacuate air out first thing is going to happen the stone from the wheel is going to hit and damage it right but the other thing is airflow under the wheel well is an high pressure zone which means it's going to be pressure building in there so i don't know if it would suck air out you you can't second guess airflow it's very complicated unless you test you're just guessing but uh yeah so the other thing is now is gaining air to it so i'm going to do that so i've got this and underneath the light there's enough room to run a pipe from your straight on to it. Now, you, I'm going to buy the ducts that go on these, and they're just a bit of a triangle with a with a round hole. So what I'm going to do is this. That's a brake duct from the throw, the leftover one. I'm going to fit that into there, so that would be in where the front will cut through into there, and then our pipe boot will come through and feed onto it. But I don't have the duct for the top of the cooler at the moment. But that's how I'm going to flow the air. I've already tried that with a light and it goes under it easily as you can see the brackets there the white bracket looks so it sits under that it's not going to cause any problems there at all so that will work now i know some people i think aj performance is a motorsport he's got one he's brought one out which is cooler fits down and he vents it through the fog light duct but i've got my fog light ducts feed in my brakes so i can't do that and Back to whether this will work, right? Now, I first heard about this from AJ Howe. So he's got a YouTube channel. He's got a Focus Estate where he runs an EcoBoost in it and he run one of these coolers to keep his temps down. And it was a treat for him. So that was like, I don't know, a year ago, something like that. He done it, maybe longer than that. And that was when I first had the idea. But I thought with all the other upgrades I'd done that I wouldn't need it. But, uh, yeah, I think I do need it because I'm so sick of trying to keep this car cool. Hopefully that will do the job. I've run it all up the temperature. We've got no leaks. We've got no nothing. Everything's looking good so far. So I've been working on that. Uh, I'll let you know in the future how it works. But the other thing is, my air filter was destroyed. Now, you know I had the ITG, right? So I went and bought the Voodoo Stage 4, which is a big bad boy one, which is way too big to fit. Normally when you've got the water bottle in, it's designed to take that out of the equation and just fit um, with all of the kit, right? The reason I bought that one, though, is because it was so cheap. There was a sale on, I think it paid about 54 quid delivered, whereas the standard one is like, I don't know, almost 100 quid, is it? So anyway, the problem with that is, it does press on the bumper here, that gets squished, and that side gets squished, right? I've eliminated the squish here, because what I've done is, is I've cut a little bit off the crash bar. I've cut more than I needed there. And then just back here, this area here, I've just taken a bit out of that so the pipe there can sit down lower. Now what that means is this, all this section here is not pressed up at the against the bumper at all. At all. I've just done a trial fit. But I do get a little bit of squish here. But I'm not too worried about that. I could move the bottle over i did think about doing mods tonight making a bracket moving up like this it's a lot of work but this filter because it's so big right if i've got a little bit of squish just this side i think i'm okay because behind you is a metal gauze framework so this can't compress and block off the hole completely 
because of the metal that's there. But this section here is well exposed to airflow. So the only bit we're going to be touching on the bumper, like I said, is just this bit here. Everything from here on is completely free flowing. But I wouldn't recommend you just chuck this on without cutting and doing their mods, right? Because I think you're just gonna you're just gonna choke our filter up. It might work, people have got it working. You do whatever suits you best. But anyway, that is my mod so far. I tell you what I'm gonna do, I'll check the headlight in right so you can see how it all fits underneath it. Right, so that's with the headlight in. You can see, look, there's so much room for activities in there. And then, when you look at this, right, when I put that in there, I'm going to have to do some cutting and fitting and that. But, but you get the picture. That is going to work absolutely perfect. So, it's just going to be a matter of how does air exit that cooler. I think it'll be okay. Um, but if we got too much high pressure, and that's what I, I'm right with coolers, right? I don't want to bore you, but for a cooler to work, you need uh, high pressure at the front, low pressure at the back. Basically, what that means is air can flow through here and escape. If you are ramming air at the front of something, right, but some other force is creating high pressure flow the other side, right, you get, you get no airflow. So your cooler becomes redundant. So I have to make sure that air is escaping. I'm hoping that it'll suck out, like I said, down there. I've also got this big chunk missing here from when it was loose before and rubbed the wheels. So when the arch goes on, I do have this exposed bit. Will that create pressure coming in? Will it suck out? I really don't know. But we will see. I'm not going to sweat about that for now because it's not <laughs> worst case scenario. We'll just run as it always did. And we'll have no gains. But I think it's going to make, uh, make a good bit of difference. But we'll have to wait and see. So... That's it. I just thought I would update you with this because I didn't want to do a full filming of everything when I'm doing it. That's what I've done. Hopefully it works and uh, we'll see how it goes. So anyway, that's my update for today. Catch you in the next one. Bye.